I recently made a little desktop organizer that showed up in Find Woodworking. One of the cool things were some shelves that slid in from the back and stopped just shy of the front. And in order to get those in there, I needed to cut a dado, which was through on the back of the case, which is easy enough, but it also had to stop before it hit my leading edge. Um, it's not a difficult thing to do. There are a few ways to go about doing it. I chose to do it on the table saw. And I like using a crosscut sled because it's a really stable surface. Basically, I'm just dropping the workpiece down, making my cut, or I'm starting with the workpiece flat, making a cut, but stopping before I hit my fence. Those two things, both of those come into play because I've got a stop lock clamp to the fence that I register the bottom of my work pieces against. That way I can be pretty assured that my dados are even top to bottom, which is really important. That does create a little bit of a problem because on one half of my pieces, if I have the bottom against the stop, it means that I have to start the cut in from that leading edge and then just cut all the way through. On the other piece with the bottom registered against that stop, I can start with the through cut, but I've got to stop before I get to the back. I handle both of those things with stops that are attached to uh, the table saw top to limit the travel of the sled depending on which side I'm cutting. So let's start with this one where I've got to start the cut in from the edge. That's a little bit trickier one. Basically what I'm going to do is position the fence so that the blade starts cutting about a half an inch in from that front edge, turn it on, drop it down, make my cut. To figure out where that's gonna happen, I'm just gonna spin the blade by hand after I set it up to the proper height that I want it to cut until one of the rear teeth is just coming up flush with the tabletop. I'm gonna say that's a pretty safe bet that's where that dado is gonna start. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm gonna square that up with a chisel anyway. I just wanna make sure I'm close enough to my line to not have to do too much chiseling, but I'm not intentionally overshooting that. So I've got my little tooth here. I have a tick mark about a half an inch in from the leading edge of this piece. And all I'm gonna do is put that against my crosscut fence, slide it forward until that tick mark is even with that tooth, which is just flush with the tabletop. So with this in place, I wanna add a stop uh, to the back of the sled so that number one, I can repeatedly make this cut without um, it moving inadvertently. Also, I can make this cut with this um, not inadvertently moving back as I'm putting the, the workpiece down onto the spinning blade. That's, that's probably the scariest thing. So get that there. Um, in the article, I clamp this to my rip fence but because the rip fence is inset from the tabletop, I had to have a little spacer here. That worked out pretty well. What I really like to do, and I would probably do 99% of the time in my own shop, is just use some double stick tape. It sounds like it might not be as positive as a stop, but the stuff sticks really, really well. And I, I trust it to hold and for this block to not move around. And I've just gotten into the habit more and more of using the double stick tape just for super, super quick clamping operations like this. A couple pieces is fine. Double check my mark is still where I want it to be. I'm just going to put this flush with the back of my crosscut sled. Now we're good to go. So this is not moving back. Again, I'm just going to drop it down to start this cut and just push the thing all the way through. Uh, so, uh, the piece is flush against the fence and flush against the stop. As I'm dropping it, obviously I'm making sure that my fingers are not in line with the blade. Okay. And there it is. So we stopped right to our line, through on the back. Pretty simple stuff. The other cut, it's gonna use the same stop and we're gonna start with the through cut so I can take this stop off.
I'm going to repeat the process, but I'm going to have to figure out this time where the blade stops cutting instead of where it stops or where it starts cutting. So same thing, I'm going to rotate the blade, but this time until a leading tooth is just flush with my sled. Now I can slide that until that tooth is about a half an inch um, ahead of my fence. And that just tells me that's where that's going to stop. So from there, I need to add a stop at the front. And because I really don't have any tabletop left to tape to, I'm going to have to clamp something to my outfeed table because I've, it's got to reach in there a little bit. I can't just use a long piece and put a single clamp on it. I'm afraid that's going to twist a little bit. I could have a super long piece and clamp it on each end, but instead I like to use more of a square piece that is going to allow me to get two clamps in line and prevent that from pivoting. All right, that's still good. I'll double check. I'll come up, stop. My mark still looks pretty good. This cuts much easier. Get my workpiece in place, get a push pad to keep that down against the tabletop, turn on the saw, make the cut till it stops, turn off the saw, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop, and then we can take the workpiece off. And there we stopped where we wanted it. We get our two pieces together. We open them up. We've got our through dados at the back and our stop dados at the front. That's it.